Julian Barragan Amado from the University of Sherbrooke. And he's going to be talking about quasi normal modes of scalar fields on a small Reisner Nordstrom ADS5 black holes. And once again, you have 25 minutes for your talk, and I'm going to let you know at 20 minutes mark. So you can go whenever you want. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for the opportunity. This is a straightforward calculation that I have done in collaboration with Bruno Carneiro in, in Brazil and Elisabetta Palante in the Netherlands. So uh, this, well, the first part of the talk is related uh, to the isomodromic deformations, which is the, the method that, or the approach that we use and the connection with the Hoyne equation and the pine level six equation. Then uh, we will write some initial conditions for a dynamical system. And we will use the, the what is called the key formula for uh, to manipulate the uh, such conditions and, and obtain an analytical expansions. Uh, that eventually will 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 give us a, a formal solution to the eigenvalue problem, and then I will try to to present the actual computation of the quasi-normal modes in 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 Reisner Nostrum ADS five, and finally I will conclude and and present some 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 future perspective. So just a bit of the motivation. This is like a, a new approach uh, to study. Uh, quasi-normal modes in several uh, space times in, with different dimensions. Uh, so we know that uh, quasi-normal modes is like a 50 years old problem, but and, and you can take your, your favorite method and then you can compute them I don't know, using the WKB approximation or, or even Mathematica. But I think that uh, the isomodromic deformation gives like a flavor of the analytical structure behind, and then you can also obtain asymptotic expansion for the frequencies. Um, also, um, we can explore different different black hole limits in terms of the of the pine Levetra sentence and the confluent limits. Uh, perhaps I, I won't I I won't have time to, to explain, but. Uh, if you consider the near extremal limit of the black hole, this is related to the um, confluent limit of the pine level six transcendent to the pine level five. And then for people that is interested in, in numerical relativity, we, we notice that uh, the, the computational effort uh, is reduced. If for example, we, we use the, the threshold determinant representation of the, of the isomonodromic tau function. So um, actually we will consider a similar system that was presented today by, by Guilherme. Uh, this is just a, a two by two Fuchsian linear system with, with four regular singular points on the Riemann sphere. Um, phi is just the, the fundamental matrix solution and A, um, it has to be rational since we are dealing with a Fuchsian system and then the residue matrices that we are considering are traceless and they don't depend on Z. And as a consequence of the isomonodromic condition, they will satisfy the Schlesinger equations. So essentially we are, uh, uh, the Schlesinger equations uh, tell us how the residue matrices has to change with respect to the location of the pole in order to, 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 to keep uh, the, the monodromy is invariant. So the last, the last equation, you can convince that it's just, uh, I mean, can be written in terms of, of A infinity, and this is a constant. And then by, by conjugation, uh, we can assume that this is just a diagonal matrix. And, and this imposes a, a restriction in one of the entries of the, of the A matrix. Uh, which is that uh, one of, uh, I mean, the of diagonal element, it has a, a only one zero in the complex plane at C equals lambda. And surprisingly, lambda as a function of T 
it satisfies the pine Lebesic's equation. This is, uh, I believe this is known by, I mean, these are the works by Fuchs and Garnier, uh, Schlesinger, so many people. And the, and the thetas are just the, the eigenvalues of the residue matrices. But, so this is, so the first take home message is like the pine Lebesic's equation is the, is the isomonogenic deformation equation of a two by two Fuchsian system with four regular singular points. But this is not the whole story. Uh, we, can, we can see that there is also a, a, a underlying structure and this, is, this can be seen essentially if we take one of the entries of the, of the fundamental matrix and then we, uh, we take the derivative and replace back with, the, with a, an, an auxiliary function. And then essentially what you get for the scalar, this is a scalar equation, it's just a, a second order, uh, a second order ordinary differential equation that can be written as a deformed Hoyne equation. It means that lambda enters into the equation as an apparent singularity and uh, the monodromy around the an apparent, around an apparent singularity, uh, the monodromy is just trivial. Uh, furthermore, k, lambda, and mu, they will they they will have an algebraic structure. Actually, they can be thought as canonical variables, where mu is the is the canonical variable conjugated to lambda. So we can define a, a Hamiltonian system where k is essentially the, the Hamiltonian of the pine level six. So instead of having the pine level six equation, we can just write this Hamiltonian system. And this is, this is known like the Garnier system. So the idea is that we are going to give uh, initial conditions to, the, to this dynamical system. Um, and, 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 you know, and we notice that if we impose uh, that, that T equals C naught, lambda and mu have the specific values and the identification of the theta T and the theta infinity got, uh, have this sh are shifted. So the deformed equation that I show uh, this slide and wrong, oh, sorry, the, the deformed Hoyne equation actually reduces to the Hoyne equation where C naught is just the, the four singular point that cannot be fixed by Mobius transformation. And the K naught is the, is the, is the so-called the accessory parameter. So uh, the idea is not that we can translate these two initial conditions. Oh, oh sorry. If we consider that these are, these are solution of the pine level six equation, we know that we can uh, we can write them in terms of the monodromy data. It was Jimbo that proved that the leading term of the, of the solution of the pine level six, six equation, near to a critical point, uh, they are described by two complex parameters that play the role of, 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 of integration constants. So for the, for the Fuchsian system with four regular singular points, the, the monodromy data is Given by the is given by the by the four local monodromies and three composite monodromies. The the, the monodromy uh, the local monodromies is just around is when you analytically continue uh, around around a loop and near the critical point when you analytically continue the, the solution the, the solution. So uh, and the composite monodromy are, are given around two regular singular points. Um, nevertheless, you can, you, can, you can get free of one of the composite monodromies if you use the, the freaky gimbal relation. So you, you, you need only six parameters and we are going to fix four. So we only need two parameters actually. And, and these two parameters, Will be encoded in the in the isomonogram function. So essentially, the, the the initial conditions for lambda 
and mu. I just translated or can be recast in terms of two initial conditions for the tau function. The first condition is just zero of the tau function. And well, and the second condition relates the accessory parameter with the log der derivative of the, of the tau function. So this is the, say the formal solution of the, uh, of the eigenvalue problem. So now we, we, we want to talk a bit about the, the isomonosomic tau function itself. So it was written believe, 10 years ago, although the, the, lean, the, the leading terms were found by, were written by, by Jimbo in the 80s. It was 10 years ago when Gamayo and Jorgo and Lisovi um, wrote like a complete series representation of the P6 tau function. And it's written in terms of the classic, in, in terms of the Vira Soro conformal blocks uh, for C equals one. And, and I mean, and you can see that the, uh, the tau function contains the, these two parameters, the s and sigma. So this is uh, the the series representation around the critical point at t zero. So if we if we plug in the tau function in the initial conditions, we can derive uh, an expression for s and also uh, an expression for the accessory parameter, which is um, it's an analytical expansion in powers of C naught, and it has a pole structure that is just given by, by I mean, the pole structure all, is only in sigma. So here the numerators are, are just uh, polynomials of the, of the monodromy, of the local monodromy. So this, the, 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 two, the, the two initial conditions were expressed in terms of these two analytical expansions that present a map between the, the C node and the K node and the accessory parameter and the sigma and S. So this is like a, it solved the, the Riemann-Hilbert problem. I mean, the Riemann-Hilbert map for, for the, for the function system and the monodromy data. Um, so now I, I will try to, to present the actual calculation of the, of the quasi-normal modes. So we just heard a bit of, about Raisin and Nostrum ADS four black holes. Uh, here is just in, in one extra dimension. So here the, the metric uh, or the black hole solution is characterized by the mass and the charge. And I said the, the ADS radius to one. And delta R uh, give us the, the, the location of the horizon. Here I will consider like instead of the R as the radial coordinate, I will consider just R square as the radial coordinate. And then um, uh, we have the, the gauge field, which is the usual. <laughs> And, and C is zero because we want a, a solution that decays at infinity. So a potential that decays at infinity. At infinity. And then the, the charge of the black hole can be parameterized in terms of the, of the other horizon, R plus, and Q, which is like a extremality parameter. So when Q is equal to one, we, we have a stream of black hole. So um, we want to study the claim gordon equation in this background. So we, we can decouple the equation just by assuming the answers in 30. So uh, for the angular power, we get what the, uh, the, the spherical harmonics that obeys the, the eigenvalue equation that is uh, below. So we have the angular momentum quantum number. And for the radial, for the radial part, we get uh, second order ordinary differential equation. So this is essentially the, the equation that you obtain. And then we, we can see that it has four regular singular points. So it's sort of the Hoyne type of equation. Um, and then, uh, I mean, if, you, if we analyze the asymptotic behavior of the, of the solutions, of the Frobenius solutions, 
we see that they are related with the characteristic spawn and with in initial coefficients. So the, uh, where the thetas are the, uh, I mean, they have this, the, the interpretation of the variation of the entropy. And these are related with the, with the with each horizon. So theta plus is just the initial coefficients around uh, around the the other horizon, for instance. And then the, the, the theta infinity is around the infinity. So if it, and it's related with the conformal dimension of ADS five. Um, then we treat uh, the R square coordinate as a complex variable, and we introduce. Um, we introduce a, a Mobius transformation and uh, is homotopic transformation and we get a, a new equation for F, which is precisely in the canonical form of the Hoyne equation. So here we recognize the accessory parameter and the C node, which is just a, a ratio between the difference of the horizons. And the kappa one and kappa two are given just by the, the local monodromies. So uh, yeah, just to present the, the C node and the, and the accessory parameter are given in terms of the uh, separation constant and the monodromy data. So since we are interested in quasi-normal modes, we, are, we need to specify the boundary conditions. And we are thinking in the sense that uh, you have an incoming wave at the horizon and regularity at infinity, at spatial infinity. And, and so, so R has to, has the following profile. So it decays, I mean, it's an incoming wave and it decays at infinity. And F is just a regular function at the boundary. Um, so now we have the problem. We, we want to compute the question of our mode. So we need to identify what the thetas, the monodromy data, how are related with the, with the characteristic exponent of the, of the radial Hoyne equation. So this is merely an identification. But the, the important part is that the boundary conditions are encoded in, the, in one of the monodromies, essentially the monodromy that is uh, where the scattering process, process happens. So it's between the, between the horizon, the other horizon and infinity. So it's between T and one because we are sending we send the, the, the infinity to one in the Mobius transformation. Uh, so the, the thing is that for, for, for the quasi-normal mode, uh, you need to impose that the monodromy around the, these two singular points, it has to be the sum of the local monodromies. And this, uh, this radial quantization condition will constrain the S. So we essentially, uh, we are giving now the, the, the other part of the S. We had the, the analytic expansion. Uh, and then we have a, another piece, which is just the S constrained by the, by the radial quantization condition. So if we consider uh, small black holes, the temperature goes like one over R plus, and then we can expand the thetas for a small R plus. Uh, so we need to compute uh, this the sigma around zero T so, or just sigma. And then um, to compute sigma, we need to use the equation for the accessory parameter, the expansion for the K naught. And then we put back this in, on, in, the, in the equation for S. And then everything, everything only depends on the frequency, and then we can we can actually compute the quasi normal modes. So, uh, if you allow me, if sigma has this this generic structure, we can uh, we can compute the correction to the to the R plus square term, which is new lambda. And then for, for the L0 case, so for the S wave mode, uh, we found that, I mean, the, it has the, I mean, you have the, the expansion for the accessory parameter, 
And then you have the other expansion, which is related with the monodromy data. So if you expand both sides and and and, and equate, you can comp you can compute the correction, which is mu zero. But then you we found this this interesting thing that um, all the all the all the terms, I mean, all the powers in C, in C naught, they will give you a contribution to the to the r plus square term. So we found that the, um, the contribution can be can be resumed in terms of the of the generating function of the Catalan numbers. We we didn't prove this statement, but I mean we went to up to seven order, and we were we found uh, well the, the sequence of the of the Catalan numbers. Julian, you have five minutes. Good, thank you. So uh, once you have found mu zero, we can we can write s. Also, you need to resume the Catalan numbers for s. And then uh, that's the idea. We will compare. I mean, we equate forty nine with the the s, which is constrained by the by the radial quantization condition. Mm -hmm. So in order to find the quasi normal modes, what we, we assume is that you have uh, you have the normal modes in empty ADS plus a small correction which is called eta. Uh, and then it's labeled by the the overtone and, and well L that's is, is zero. And then you, you just put it in the in the in the equation for S. And you essentially can compute the the, the eigenfrequencies, at least for L equals zero. And okay, just this is uh, how the, the numerics. This is just the numerics. The pine level six how how it implements the the imaginary part of the of the quasi normal modes. And we can see that we have just a super radian window, and then when when Q is one over the square root of three, you 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 start to have these uh, instabilities. Um, so okay, uh, we essentially we have seen that the boundary value problem associated to the radial ODE can be recast in terms of an initial value problem for uh, an isomonodromic tau function, namely the the Pine-Levé six tau function. Um, we we have shown that the the actual the, the computation of the asymptotic expansion it would get it would get contributions from all the descendants of the CFT primaries because la, I mean sigma has the interpretation of being the intermediate channel um, and you can resume all this contribution in terms of the of the generating function of the Catalan number. Well, for the L0 mode, we have this, this radiant instabilities when Q is larger than, I mean, when you have a large Q, at least in, in the small radius limit. And so about the future perspective, I think we can, it would be nice to explore the actual the solution to the plain Gordon equation to study, uh, I don't know, speed of, of sound or something like that. So some, hydrodynamical properties in the dual holographic theory. Uh, this method also works for, for asymptotically flat for, or for higher spin perturbations. So we could try to analyze fermionic fields in, in Reisner Nostrum ADS5. And, and also another interesting point is we can, we can increase the number of singular points. So in, for instance, we can consider five regular singular points and try to describe them in terms of the isomonodromic tau function with five singularities. So as an example, you can take the Kern Newman, the seated black hole in four dimensions, and you find that it has five uh, singularities. So, thank you. Okay, so 